Hi, I'm Brett Parker, multimedia specialist for the National Provisioner. Today, we're highlighting Cargill, who were recently recognized at the 2024 Big Sustainability Awards by receiving the Sustainability Leadership Award and Sustainability Initiative of the Year Award. Here to discuss this with us is Eliza Clark, Vice President of Sustainability of Cargill Food. Eliza, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be with you, Brett. Thanks for having me. Well, firstly, we would just like to know, how does it feel at Cargill to win two major sustainability awards? Well, of course, it always feels wonderful to be recognized. And indeed, sustainability is really core to who we are and what we do at Cargill. So our purpose is to nourish the world in a responsible or safe, responsible and sustainable way. So the work that our team members have been doing around the world to invest in new sustainability solutions, to collaborate with farmers, customers, governments, um, has really resulted in in meaningful outcomes uh, in the the communities where we operate and in our broader value chains. So we're thrilled to be recognized for the work that we're doing and, um, of course, have had the chance to partner with many other uh, individuals in our industry along the way. So part of this recognition is for them as well. What do you feel Cargill does differently in terms of sustainability efforts compared to similar companies? I think there are a, a few key points of differentiation. The first piece I would say really is the focus on partnership. So in many cases, the work that we are trying to do are, are beyond um, is beyond our four walls. So we're working within our direct and indirect supply chains to tackle um, what tend to be more systemic challenges. So things like climate change, food security, water scarcity. So we partner with producers wanting to make sure that sustainability works for them with communities um, to ensure that we've got the right uh, policy landscape in play to be able to advance sustainability. Um, And then also, of course, uh, invest in innovation within our own company to try to figure out new solutions that will work for for all parties and indeed be lasting. Um, It's the future. The other piece I would call out is um, we really are focused on having science-based validation for our sustainability programs. So um, sometimes that process can take a little bit longer, but we work with third parties to verify um, our sustainability products or solutions um, that we're either uh, implementing within our own operations or within our supply chains. Does Cargill have any green goals the company has not achieved yet? Certainly. Uh, So if you go to our website, cargill.com, we have um, what's called a reporting hub where you can see all of our sustainability goals in our ESG scorecard. And you'll see there that it's a mix. We have achieved a few of our sustainability goals already. One notable goal being our scope one and two, um, greenhouse gas goal, which is carbon emissions associated with our own operations. We achieved our goal to reduce those emissions by 10% by the year 2025, uh, more than a year early. So we're very proud of that. That has been uh, the effort um, across more than a thousand sites worldwide to improve energy efficiency and um, enhance energy conservation. But we also have a number of goals um, that are set to 2030 that are more focused on our supply chain. So um, one example would be scope three or supply chain greenhouse gas emissions. Um, In that area, we have a goal to reduce scope three or supply chain emissions by 30% by the year 2030. We have initiated um, a broad range of programs across our supply chains to make progress on those goals, but um, we still have some work to do to make sure that those solutions can scale. Uh, One example that I would share for you, Brad, is um, within our beef supply chain. So we also have a public goal to reduce supply chain emissions from our North American beef supply chain by 30%, again, by the year 2030. And uh, we have a program that's called Beef Up Sustainability that really is focused on achieving that goal. Uh, We've made tremendous progress in the area of regenerative grazing. Uh, We have 
projects underway across North America that will uh, that are projected to cover more than 5 million acres by the year 2030. And we've also made great strides in feed efficiency, um, again, within our own operations, logistics and transportation, uh, and then also in reducing food waste. But um, we have more work to do to get, kind of cover the gap to get to 30%, uh, which is work that we have underway, uh, both in our within our own organization that, and then in partnering with other external NGOs and academic institutions as well. Now, how much do you feel Cargill has changed over the past decade in terms of green efforts? Like, are there any um, strategy, strategies or procedures you guys have left behind in the name of progress? Well, that's a great question. Um, well, first I would say it's an area where we have grown and significantly enhanced our capabilities, uh, particularly over the last maybe five years. Uh, as I mentioned, sustainability has been core to our purpose um, for more than a decade at, at this point, but we really have put significant emphasis on hiring top talent, subject matter experts in the space, um, investing in capital improvements in our own factories and our operations. And then what I was mentioning earlier about developing pilots and scalable programs within our supply chains. Um, in general, we've invested more than $1.5 billion in our traditional protein business because we believe um, you know, as the world's population continues to grow, so will the demand for protein. And we really wanna be part of the solution and making sure that um, sustainable protein is part of that mix. Um, I always say that I want to live in a future where we can all um, continue to eat beef because beef is delicious and um, part of a healthy and nutritious diet. So we we have, I think, really put our money where our mouth is over the last five to 10 years in terms of hiring talent, building capabilities, developing programs. But we also know that there's more to do and, and we'll continue to invest in those innovations and partnerships as we move forward. Do you feel the meat industry as a whole still has a long way to go in terms of sustainability efforts? Well, Brett, I, th I would say probably every industry has a long way to go in terms of advancing sustainability. We've got some really tough uh, environmental and social challenges ahead of us as a global society. But um, I, I think as an industry, we've made great progress and there's great solutions that we can build upon and scale and, and replicate. And that is part of what we have ahead of us. Um, I'm a member of the Global Roundtable for Sustainable Beef and Cargill is active in the US and the Canadian Roundtables as well. And there's tremendous, um, I think, excitement and momentum building across the players in our industry in terms of really wanting to make sure that we're developing programs, again, that can stand the test of time um, and really make sense for both producers all the way to consumers who really want, um, again, to have options for sustainable beef. Fantastic. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. Eliza Clark of Cargill, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Great to be with you. Thank you, Brett. And thank you all for watching.